This lecture is on biomarkers of infection. These are blood tests that help us tell if bacterial infection is present or absent. And in this lecture, we're going to cover three biomarkers. Those are the white cell count, C-reactive protein, and procalcitonin. We'll take them in turn. The ideal characteristics of a biomarker of infection would be that when it was positive, we would always give the patient antibiotics. And that when it was negative, it would always be safe never to give the patient antibiotics. There's no biomarker that can perform both of these, and some perform better than others. We'll take a look at these three in turn. White cell count is a highly sensitive test. That means it usually goes up with bacterial infection. For example, it would go up in tonsillitis and community acquired pneumonia. So that means that a normal white count suggests that the bacterial infection is absent. However, you can find it either a normal or a low white count in patients with bacterial infection. So this cannot, cannot be relied on completely. The, the specificity of a white cell count is low. That means it goes up with lots of other illnesses and drugs and not just in infection. For example, white cell count goes up in patients with burns, those who've undergone trauma, and those taking some tablets such as prednisolone. As a result, Having a high white cell count does not necessarily mean that the patient has bacterial infection. There are some things that can help you, however. The presence of immature neutrophils on a blood film, which is called left shift, is more specific for bacterial infection. These are called band forms due to the appearance of their nucleus, and you can see them in the pictures above. If there are greater than 10% band forms on a blood film, this is suggestive of bacterial infection without being definitive. Moving on to C-reactive protein. The sensitivity is also high, which means it usually goes up with bacterial infection, as we've seen with white cell count. But the specificity is also low, which means it goes up with lots of other illnesses, such as burns, tuberculosis, and connective tissue disorders such as SLE. Here are some uses for C-reactive protein. It's good at excluding bacterial infection when it's low. For example, the CRP less than 20 has a negative predictive value of 99% for bacterial meningitis. And when used as a point of care test, it reduces antibiotic use for sore throat in primary care settings. And a very high CRP greater than 100 is more specific for bacterial infection. Although this can occur with other conditions. CRP is most useful for monitoring bacterial infections. For example, a falling CRP can guide the duration of antibiotics in a chronic infection such as osteomyelitis. Moving on to procalcitonin. Once again, the sensitivity is high, which means it usually goes up with typical bacterial infections. The specificity is better than for white cell count or CRP, but it does go up with some other illnesses such as burns, tuberculosis and trauma. An important point about procalcitonin is that it's down-regulated by interferon gamma, which is produced in response to viral infection. This means that PCT is good at differentiating viral infections from bacterial infections. There's evidence from randomized controlled trials for the use of PCT, and specifically it's safe to withhold antibiotics when PCT is low in the following conditions. In meningitis, in upper respiratory tract infection, and in acute exacerbations of COPD. There are some cautions with the use of PCT, however. In patients with a SERS response, PCT is a poor discriminator between infections and other causes. And it's not helpful when patients have been in hospital for many days and have already been commenced on antibiotics. It's really most helpful when a patient is first seen and in outpatient settings. Remember, procalcitonin is 10 times the cost of CRP or white cell count, and it can't help you differentiate between bacterial and mycobacterial infections. For example, it can't tell you the difference between pneumonia and pulmonary tuberculosis. It also cannot help you decide whether or not to start antibiotics in patients with sepsis, where it's actually a poor discriminator. So in summary, 
biomarkers help you decide whether or not to prescribe antibiotics. White cell count and CRP can help exclude bacterial infection when negative. Greater than 10% immature neutrophils and a CRP greater than 100 suggest bacterial infection without being definitive. Procalcitonin is more expensive, but it's particularly good at differentiating bacterial from viral infections.